Hey, good morning guys. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Hope you guys had a good one. I had a great one, but I'm still here at Aquascape because I love it at this place. I'm gonna take you guys on a winter field trip. Thought it'd just be kind of cool for those of you guys that don't live in areas that get below freezing to see what some of these water features actually look like in the winter. More importantly, how to actually winterize these things and get the biggest bang for your buck out of the winter. I know personally how much I hate the winter. <laughs> Why I live in Illinois, I'm not quite sure. The one thing that brings me a little bit of satisfaction in the winter is what my water features look like throughout the winter. And that ever evolving form of ice and how every day, whether it gets colder and colder, the ice changes or if it gets warmer and warmer, the ice is changing. And so that's why I so, so strongly try to design these things from inside the house rather than from outside the house. Cause in the winter when it's 25, 20, zero, negative 20, I can still look at something pretty cool. So let's check out some of the features here at Aquascape and then let's go check out some of those other features that we talked about all summer long and how cool they were gonna be looking in the winter. All right, here we go. So here we are at the entrance to Aquascape and you're always greeted by the oldest water feature here at Aquascape. It was here actually before the building was even occupied and it is 25 degrees out and you can see there's a little bit of ice forming. Now the biggest difference in this pond compared to some of the other ponds you're gonna see is the massive amount of circulation we got going on. Because of the amount of circulation, we have no ice over the surface of this pond, which is really, really good and keeps these fish extremely healthy. The bigger the amount of area I can keep open in the winter, the more oxygen can come out, more importantly, more gases and stuff can escape. And those gases are formed by decomposing leaf matter, decomposing plants, leftover fish waste, that kind of stuff. But you can see all the fish huddled up in the bottom. The fish literally will stay kind of in this position almost all winter long. They're finding that warmest area down on the bottom and they'll be fine. Now as the water temperature gets lower and lower and lower, you're gonna see that this ice crawls out further, further and further. Eventually, this entire pond is gonna freeze over except for two spots. That area there where we have one of our Pro Air 60s feeding uh, an aerator, and as long as that's agitating the water, we'll always keep a hole open in the ice right in there. The other areas on this pond that'll stay open for a while are over here in this waterfall. Now look over here and the amount of ice that's forming up on that little log that kind of comes down. And what happens, it's kind of cool, water actually never forms on the waterfall. You can see over on the side how we got a little bit of ice build up on the left there. It's grabbing that splash. So as that splash hits the rock, it creates more and more and more ice. Eventually, as it gets colder and colder out here, this will turn into a giant dome of ice. You'll swear the whole thing is frozen solid, but if you stand next to it, you can hear the water moving underneath. This will form an enormous amount of ice because of the amount of splash. You can see even on this rock how the ice carries out pretty far. Even on this rock right here, about four feet away, we're getting a bunch of ice. This will get a bunch of ice. This area will hardly get any. And this area, usually right in here, stays open all winter long. And it's because that water shoots across the surface. It more pushes rather than splashes. And that's what we're looking for to keep big holes open in the ice. But those fish will handle this no problem all winter long. The number one question we get when we put a pond in is what do you do with those fish? And that's what we do. They just stay in there all winter long and I promise they will be okay as long as you keep that hole open in the ice. Now here's our big pond and it's almost completely frozen. And again, the bigger the body of water, less circulation, the thicker the ice. The smaller the body of water and the more circulation, um, the easier it is to keep a bigger hole open. But this pond will actually get about 12 inches of ice out there in the center. The ice will actually get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner as it gets closer to the shoreline. And the main reason that happens is because the ground insulates it that much more. You can see there's a huge hole open over by the urns. In fact, let's go check that out. Look at the fish, all just kind of hanging out down there in the bottom. So here we are getting closer to the urns. We put these in just so we could see something more from inside our house. Look at the ice build up here where that splash is actually just hitting some of the um, irises that are decomposing here. But the rest of this is staying pretty open. Now as it gets colder and colder, the same thing's gonna happen. These are gonna get all domed up with ice and it actually looks really cool at night with the underwater lights on at night. It turns into big giant glowing chunks of ice. But at 25 degrees, you can see this is all pretty open in here. Combination of an aerator sitting out there and these guys. So this keeps a big massive hole open. If we look over in the distance, they actually see another hole 
and that's just where the water is circulating. So as long as that water from the upper pond is pushing across the surface right there, we get a nice big hole open in there. So you can see some ice forming over here. These are the waterfalls that feed our big rainwater harvesting system attached to our large pond. Pretty awesome, big ice castle formations starting in here and this will only get more and more extreme as it gets colder and colder. And so as everybody drives into work, this is the main pathway or main drive coming into work. They get to look outside their car and see this thing evolve over winter. Which like I said earlier, makes the winters somewhat more tolerable, at least for me. Really cool. I know Greg, uh, the pond guy over there, posted some pictures of these uh, a couple days ago. If you follow him on Instagram, I think you probably saw it. Look at the difference in these urns out here and how much ice is over the top of all of these guys compared to the urns back behind me at the building. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, there was a waterfall over there by the building that had zero ice on it. And then these are just covered in ice. Here's a patio bowl. See it? See it? There it is. There's actually a patio bowl right there. And the whole thing's got ice built up over the top of it and then comes down through here. And you can see how the ice actually never adheres to the bowl itself. The water always separates the ice from touching the bowl. It almost kind of insulates it a little bit and that water's running right underneath. So we get in really close here. You can actually see that water moving underneath there. Check that out. Same thing with the urns. See how the ice doesn't actually adhere to the urn at all? And what happens is it climbs from here and builds up and builds up and builds up. Now if we look really close, we can see that water running underneath all that ice. Even though it's totally frozen over on the top. So the reason this area is getting so much more ice than the stuff up close to the building, it's one thing, it's the wind. There's nothing protecting it out here. So a lot more wind. That wind probably drops the temperature closer to a, I don't know, it feels like 10 degrees might right now, maybe five degrees. Pretty chilly, but there's nothing protecting it. So these things are freezing over a whole lot faster than the other ones. At night, these things look incredible next to our sign. All lit up with those color changing lights. Let's go check out one of my favorite water features here at Aquascape. It's our big signature waterfall. Love this thing. One, not just because of the size of it, but the way the ice forms on it. It's actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, as we get closer, I'll explain it a little bit more. But before we go over there, check out this little guy. So this is our eternal bubbling rock that feeds into a permeable patio. So the water comes up out of here, drips down. Look at how there's hardly any ice on there. Again, it's pretty protected out here protected by the building. You got some landscape and stuff. You got the berm back over in there that really slows down the wind. But when it gets cold, this thing turns into a big giant chunk of ice too. And so what happens in the winter, water comes down, comes down through here, goes through the cracks of this permeable patio into a giant tank. In fact, there's a picture over here of how this works. This is gonna make it super easy to explain. As ice builds up and around this, and actually ends up insulating the water running on the inside, almost creating kind of an igloo effect, we start losing water in here to create that initial cast of ice that gets put over the top. As water goes down, 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 eventually we stop losing water because the ice has created such an igloo environment insulating that water down here that we stop losing water. So we take an educated guess saying how much water will we lose to create that cast of ice over the top and how much more do I need left down in there to insulate. Because we have about a 5,000 gallon tank sitting on here, no matter how much water I lose, if I lost 2,000 gallons of water to create a giant dome of ice, I'd still have 3,000 gallons down below. The other thing that happens is because we dug such a giant rainwater harvesting system on this, the bottom of those tanks, this area here, is down way below our frost. So we're down about five feet deep right in here, 60 inches. And 42 inches is where uh, we need to be to be safe below frost lines here in the Chicagoland area. So moving warmer water keeps this thing open quite a bit longer than some of the other features, especially compared to this guy. So this one 
is awesome because every single day that ice definitely changes. The big reason I like this one so much is because it forms a very unique ice castle formation. Ice build up here and on the inside, which normally doesn't happen. Here it happens because it's open back behind there. So I'm gonna take you guys around the backside into the grotto area and show you how the ice forms in there. But because air comes in from the back and from the front, we get a pretty incredible ice castle formation on this. At times we've even seen that ice form in some weird ways and this is where it gets tricky running these things in the winter. Every now and then the ice will shift. One year it shifted so much that the water was no longer being insulated by the ice on the outside. It started coming up and over the ice. Once it starts coming up and over the ice and all this is frozen, then ice and water moved out through all of this area. That's why probably 90 five maybe even 97 percent of our customers shut their ponds down in the winter because when that happens it's usually around negative 10 somewhere in there and it's a pain in the butt to fix some little icicles there now that's done intentionally remember i'm in the grotto here so right above me is a big giant pool of water we actually drilled a hole through this up into the liner up there to allow water to weep down through this. And those icicles will just get bigger and bigger through the winter. And then check it out from inside here. <laughs> it's so awesome. That is a seven foot icicle right now. Now what happens with this one behind me because again, it's not insulated from the inside or outside. You can see down below how I'm starting to get some ice build up in here. We've seen this ice actually build up into here to the point where the only way to actually get in here is to crawl in. So that ice actually will get all the way up into about here. And now there's a rubber liner below it all, so it all kind of insulates and the ice will carry out through here and move back through all these joints out into here. It's kind of an eerie feeling. I hope sometime this winter that happens and I can show you guys what it looks like. Well, that's enough here at Aquascape. Let's get in the truck because uh, it's freezing and um, <laughs> my hands are starting to work a little slower. Let's get in the truck, go check out a couple other water features that we built this year and uh, see what they look like. Maybe I can even swing by uh, my house, I guess that makes sense, and uh, show you what my pond's doing this time of year.